If you're in the market for an affordable apartment, Manhattan's Upper West Side is the last place you should be looking. Unless you're looking at today's apartment. I'm not really sure what to call this place, but it's got two levels and it's on the second floor of a gorgeous building on West 82nd Street, right by the train and Central Park. Sounds great, but we won't know for sure until we go see it. Here we are at the 79th Street number one station, and this is the closest train to the apartment. But if you don't wanna take the train, apparently there's a bus stop here. Either way, the apartment is on 82nd, we're on 79th, it's not too far away. Now, this neighborhood has just about everything right here. You've got little salons, and right over here we've got a wine store, which is next to a bookstore. If you wanna forget everything you read, this looks like a killer combination. Unfortunately, the first coffee place we we've run into is a Starbucks. I guess it's better than a Dunkin' Donuts, but we'll have to keep our eyes out and see if we find anything better. And if the bookstore we saw earlier doesn't have the selection you were looking for, across the street we've got one of the last surviving Barnes and Nobles. But you know, with two bookstores, this neighborhood might help you overcome smartphone addiction. And across the street from all of that, there is a Chipotle. I have rather mixed feelings on Chipotle I eat here, but there is nothing less satisfying than the last two or three bites of one of their burritos. It's never good. You should stop after you get two thirds of the way through. But good news, if you walk just one block west over here to Amsterdam Avenue, you will find a ton of local restaurants and cafes that are probably more exciting than Chipotle, like this bar, which will help you live the high life. We've also got local pizza, more local pizza, as well as this art gallery. You know it's good art when you don't understand it, and the less you understand it, the more you should be willing to pay for it. That's how art works. All right, good news, the apartment's right over there on 82nd Street and right behind me is a local cafe so you don't have to end up going to Starbucks unless you really want to, in which case I can't help you. You've also got a grocery store on that corner and a cafe right here as well, which also looks like it has pastries and coffee. Just down the block this way, there's like a million other restaurants. And if you wanna go out with friends or grab a quick bite to eat, you can do all that just around the corner from the apartment. This is one of the most unique apartments that I've ever seen. You've got this whole lofted area, which I can't wait to check out. But before we do, this building has a couple of features that make this an easy place to live. Down here in the basement, there are laundry machines. Not a ton of machines, but you don't have to leave to do your laundry. And can we get a thumbs up for how cool the inside of this building is? This totally feels like a small house. And just look at the size of this window. This thing's massive. And since we're on the second floor, you've got a pretty cool view of the street. But as you can see, we are not ground level, which is a good thing. And best of all, you don't have to buy curtains because these massive shutters, you can just swing them shut and boom, you've got privacy. They totally could have removed stuff like this from the apartment, but I'm glad that's still here. And it definitely makes me pretty excited to check this place out. And if you have fun watching this, make sure you subscribe because we do about three of these a week. Right there's the front door and next to it is your coat closet. And then you just kind of walk into the living space. And this is really big, 14 feet, seven inches, 16 feet, 11 inches is what you're working with. There's a lot you can do with this. Right over there by where you see the kitchen. Over here you could get a dining table over by this random door, which is just here for some reason. This doesn't look like it gets attached to anything, but it does give you an idea of how big this place is. And if the dining table's here, you could have your couch against the wall next to it with your entertainment center over here in this corner. And if you have the room set up like that, this is gonna be an easy place to hang out with multiple people, not just by yourself, which is usually what you're stuck doing in a studio. The only problem with this plan of setting up the living space is that it hinges on you sleeping up here. So let's go find out if that's possible. All right, this ladder is built in and it feels really sturdy. Definitely not something I'm having trouble navigating. 
Oh wow, there's a lot of space up here. And there's also a little window, so you're getting some natural light. Let's, uh, let's see how big it is. So this lofted area is 14 feet, seven inches, seven feet, seven inches. Lengthwise and widthwise, this is perfect. You could definitely get a mattress up here, but the ceilings are three feet, five inches, which means that you can't stand up and walk around or you'll hit your head like I am. But this is definitely pretty cool. You can look through here and see the rest of the apartment. I also like that the floor up here is tile and not carpet for some reason, a a lot of sleep lofts have carpet, which is just gross. I guess if you didn't want to put your bed up here, you could put it downstairs. There is enough space for it, but having it up here definitely gives you more options with what to do with the rest of this space. Otherwise, this would be perfect for storage. Let me know in the comments how you would set this up. And if you'd be willing to traverse this ladder to get over to where the kitchen and the bathroom are. Here we are in the kitchen and it's not a massive space because it's in its own room just off the side of the living room, but it is pretty nice. We've got a nice large microwave and a four burner stove. There's also a full size fridge and we've got a dishwasher, that's great. The counter space is also pretty good. And I like how the sink is right in the middle of everything. That just makes it so easy to clean anything that comes off the stove or explodes in the microwave. And there's also a couple outlets over here, right here, which which would be good for kitchen appliances like a coffee maker or a toaster. Cabinets and stuff aren't bad. You can easily reach everything. And overall, I think that this definitely works for one person, maybe for two people. And when you consider that most studios or one bedrooms have a kitchen that really sucks, this is definitely an upgrade. Speaking of upgrades, here we are in the bathroom. And I like this bathroom. I would describe it as functional, but not necessarily fancy. Although this mirror is pretty fancy. Look at that, it turns into a medicine cabinet. You've also got a pretty big sink with space for paper towels and soap. And underneath the sink, there's a decent amount of storage as well. You've got a couple drawers. You can easily keep stuff in here, no problem. But I think the big win here is actually this standing shower because it's bigger than most standing showers and a bathtub could have been put here by accident, which I think would have been the wrong move because then you'd have your tub right next to your toilet, which is the case in a lot of these apartments. But this definitely works. It's easy to move around in here. You've got the glass right here, so you don't have to get a disgusting shower curtain and change it every couple weeks and you can easily move around in here without killing yourself by tripping over things. And if renting a boring white box with no cool features sounds like a nightmare to you, this is your apartment. Check out the video description for a link to the agent's contact information. And then let's tour some more apartments. Pick whichever one of these looks cooler and I'll see you in the next video.